Good afternoon, everyone. New IPCC panel report finds favor to lower the tipping point temperature to 1.5 C. That 2 C that we've heard about for the last 25 years is now just considered an upper limit. That's because global temperatures are dropping. John Casey, two major climate predictions coming true. Scientific American, 99% chance 2016 is going to be the hottest. Interesting how it matches that 1.5 C. 1928 to 1933, temperatures rose 5.6 Fahrenheit. Atlantic Ocean's cooling. RSS shows the temperature down. UAH shows the temperature down. UK temperatures are down. Northeast United States, scalding hot at 57 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of July. Anywhere it's blue on here and Australia is going to snow all the way down to sea level. And NOAA just is not updating any of their global analysis or temperature charts for June because it's cooling. As we've all heard for the last 25 years, the 2C rise is going to make everything catastrophic on the planet. Oh, I mean, wait a second. They just found in favor of 1.5C. I guess the science is settled. Well, unless the global temperature is cool and then they need to adjust it to hide the cooling. They had to readjust the wording like they did with global warming. They changed it to climate change. Now this has changed to upper limit compared to the tipping point. And I pulled this directly out of the IPCC report. Everywhere it said 2C, 2C, 2C. And now they're trying to say 1.5C. All the way back from 1990. All the way until today. Every chart they have. 2C, 2C, 2C. Yet it's lower to 1.5C now. I wonder why. Scientific American coming out. 2016 is going to be the hottest year ever. 99% sure. And notice the number. 1.5C. Yet our global temperatures are dropping, the second most ever recorded. And as we get into the La Nina, it will not be the hottest year ever. Look at Dr. Roy Spencer's site here, and he shows where the temperatures will have to stabilize and then start to increase for this magic to happen. RSS shows cooling. UAH shows cooling. It's been confirmed that June was only the second warmest in the satellite era, and that follows on the heels of May being the second warmest. And also, Noah, why do you not have June temperatures up there when we're finding them elsewhere? Contiguous U.S. maximum temperatures show a Dust Bowl era warmer than it is today. And conveniently, the IPCC forgets to tell you, look at that giant 5.6 Fahrenheit temperature rise from 1928 to 1933. Average temperatures... Pretty much the same as they were in the Dust Bowl. Although I would have to disagree knowing how they've moved so many temperature stations now to show warming on airport runways, next to air conditioning vents, etc. Back to the NOAA global analysis. No analysis for June. Wonder why. No analysis for state of the climate for June. I wonder why. Oh, it's cooling everywhere. Atlantic Ocean cooling. UK temperatures are cooling. Absolutely scorching hot 57 degree Fahrenheit weather in the middle of July in the Northeast United States. Taking a look at the surface heat map, can barely find anything over 90. All the yellow stars are record cold, record snow across South America over the last month and a half. Looking forward into Australia today, tomorrow, and the day after. Winds and Antarctic temperatures blowing directly north right onto the coast there. Everywhere you see blue is going to be snow. They're expecting snow down to the actual beaches at sea level. This is going to be the second once in a hundred year storm to pound the coast in two months. Higgins storm chasing showing you where the snow is going to drop along the coast. Also Australian June temperatures when you look through their data, nothing even close to the first warmest. Everything's fourth, fifth. Some of it's off the chart, not even registering anything warm or anomalous. John Casey, two major climate predictions coming to pass, he called it the peaking of the temperatures and when the global temperature would start to decline as we go into the mini ice age, we have descended into that beginning point, as well as the sun was the heating driver of our planet, not CO2, not humans. And from this point forward, we're going to have difficulties producing food globally to feed everybody.
That's why the chaos is going on across the planet. That's why there's so many distractions in the news from the racial tensions in the United States to Brexit to the refugee crisis across Europe. They're trying to steer everybody's heads away from all this cooling. And if you do just set all of that distraction aside and look back this way where they don't want you to look, there is a major, major tsunami of societal change coming due to lack of food production. And the temperatures are just going to continue to decrease from this point forward along with our global population. With all that said, I want to leave you with some beauty. These beautiful noctilucent clouds. Apparently what you're looking at here is the largest, strongest single event ever seen of noctilucent clouds ever recorded due to the gargantuan amounts of meteor dust and cool temperatures, signs in the heavens. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.